I could use the keyboard command, but I'm not sure it would work. Um, just for fun, let's see. No, it's on that. Okay, so um, here we are. We're in, uh, you know, on the web. We're going to start. Let me go over here and click on this. Am I sharing my screen? I should be sharing, sharing my screen. I'm recording my screen. Everything looks green. I'm getting a recording there. I'm going to go right there. Okay, all the recording is happening. Um, your open a browser you go to your open a new tab and go to um pixlr.com pixlr.com is a photo editing site now i've logged in already when you log in use your school email address and password say i want to sign with google and then use your school email address and password that will kind of like sort of link stuff together you don't have to create an account uh, it should open an account for, you know, should be an account there with your Gmail sign in. So your Gmail sign in for school is your school e email address and password. You're in the photo editor. Photo editor, um, like uh, Vector is to Adobe Illustrator and, um, and um, Inkscape, photo editor is to, uh, Pixlr is to Adobe uh, Photoshop and GIMP. If you have, you know, in my in my in my account in my um, class, there's those links to the free software. Um, there's probably a link to this, but there's also a link to GIMP if you have a computer and you want to download an editing program that's like Photoshop but more powerful because it's on your computer. Um, or Illustrator, so you can download Inkscape. You can do those things. Um, all right, so I've got my my photo editor open. I'm going to click on Advanced because you know, we're advanced, we're photo class. Um, I click on advanced and it brings me this page here. I'm gonna create new. So you can see I've done this a couple times before, but I'm gonna create new. I'm gonna also let people into the class. So you might see a, hear a few beeps on the video or on the recording. All right, so I wanna make a 19 by 20 by 1080 workspace. And you see there's all these preset sizes like this is uh, Ultra HD is, is my monitor size, but I don't want to use that. I want to use 1920 by 1080. Um, and I could over here say um, final sample P3. So you can give it a name before you create it. Um, no background, um, width and height, or set with 1920, height 1080. You just click on the preset and then click on create. And it brings us into the Pixlr editor. The Pixlr editor, kind of the same, there are some of the same conventions as the vector editor. The vector editor had a, a XY position zero, zero for stuff that appears on the screen up here. Um, it has tools on the side. There's more tools in this program than there are in vector. And one of the main differences is once you click on a tool, it stays selected until you unselect it and go to something else. So there's a, a few different ways of doing things. Um, and, you know, as with with these programs, if you mouse over the tool, it will give you the name of the tool. So it's 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 helpful in that way. So if I mouse over like the clone stamp, it'll say clone and it'll say how it works and give you some information. Um, liquify, so cutout mask, all these different tools, you can just mouse over them and start to mess with it. And a lot of people learn this stuff by watching YouTube videos and just messing with the program. Now, we've got our background here. And if you haven't done so already, I strongly suggest you go get a cheap mouse. Um, my mouse, if you look at the screen, I can't, uh, I've got a little mouse, it's wired. You know, a cheap wired mouse is between six and 10 bucks. It's a great investment, especially doing graphics because you have a lot more control than you do like a touch screen or a, or a excuse me, mouse, mouse pad. So right now we're looking at the background and with the scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out, but you can also control plus and minus and control zero will send you back to the full screen um, zoom. So I've got the zoom set up. I can scroll back and forth with my mouse. Um, what I want to do is now notice that there's like this checkerboard pattern in the background. If I put just one little design on the background, uh, what the checkerboard pattern means is that's translucent. So if you uploaded this file only and you pasted it into a document, 
you would see through it. Every place where there's a checkerboard, it's see-through. Um, but I want to have a background. And one of, you know, I'll start with a background. And one of the things you notice over here that's different than, than a little bit different than, than vectors, we've got layers that are fairly distinct. So I'm going to add my first layer is going to be my background layer. And I'm going to click on the shape tool down here. And when I click on the shape tool, it, turn, it gives you the little tool controls up here in the, in the toolbar, in the top toolbar. I want, it, I want a rectangle. I want it opaque. Um, the stroke doesn't matter right now. All I want to do is draw a box around the background. So I'm going to start up here in the upper left and draw a black rectangle to cover the screen. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to see the background. I don't want to have it translucent either. I want to have a black background or whatever color. You can choose whatever color you want. Um, so I've got my shape. I've got to set it up. And now the I've just finished drawing the shape. In Vector, the, the shape tool would have turned off. And here in Pixlr, the shape tool is still turned on. So um, be aware of that to now mess with this, this shape, I'm going to click on the Select tool. And now it's selected that shape. And because I drew it larger than the background, it made the size of the shape the exact same size of the background. You can see the width is 1920, the height is 1080, and I've got left and, uh, left and top. So this, if I put this 10, it would just move the, see it moved my box over. Since I don't want that, I want it to stay zero, I'll just leave it that way. So X, so left is, to the left is, is the, um, x dimension in vector and down or top is y and that's the down dimension but we're not going to use that for the, the background we'll use it later all right so i've got my background all set up the next thing i want to do is start adding images and i'm going to do that by adding more layers so i go over here to the layer um you can see right here the the layer um button and i'm going to add a layer and it says empty image or text i'm going to click on image which takes me to my folder. Now, since I've already gone and found where my files are, um, it's a little bit different because since I found where my files all are already, I don't have to search for it. You would search, or, you know, navigate to wherever you put your pictures. And I suggest you create a folder on your laptop or Chromebook. And it might be the download folder, wherever it is, you're going to find where your pictures go and put, and put them into one folder so that, or just leave in the downloads folder so that you can you know, navigate to them here. And this is where you do this. So all over here, the navigation tools, I've navigated to my folders. I'm gonna pick one of these pictures that I wanna put into my design. And here's my first picture, all right? And that one is a little bit big. So I'll use these dimension tools up here and I'm gonna say, oh, let's make it, I can either, drag to select that or control a to select that and say 400. so there's my first picture it, i don't want it too big and i'm and it's selected so i can i can move this around um it's ready to go uh and i'm going to add some more pictures so i'm going to add another layer so i go back to layers and i say layer i'm going to add another one add an image and i'm going to add the other picture from sagrada familia and also make it 400. And so there's that. It's kind of ready to go there. And I'm going to add, I want five, three, five, seven. I want an odd number of images. And for the final, it's going to be five. So I'm going to just keep on adding images by adding layers. So I'm going to add another layer, add an image. And I'll pick one of these right here and make the width 400. And notice that the ratio of height to width on these is a little bit different than the other pictures. And then I'm going to add another layer with another image with the other close-up of a piece of glass. And I'm going to make the width 400 and move that around so that I got that and I add one more picture and it'll gonna, it's going to going to be the Valencia City of Science and width 
400. All right. So now I have my pictures all set up. I've got my pictures all imported. And I want to arrange them on the background. And this is where um, the design elements of your pictures come into play. So I want to look at these pictures. So, and, and now notice the layers. This picture is, is on the, the bottom most layer. So that's where, where you see the effects of the layers. So you can see how these pictures are like the, the Valencia picture, I added that one last. So there's layers there. The, that's what that means is that each picture is its on, on its own. Like if, if it was there, like a clear piece of plastic, you laid it down and laid down another one. Those layer, that's what the layers mean. There's like layers in a cake. And I can, you can actually move these layers around, but we, we don't need to because we're not going to overlap the pictures. You know, you could. You could have overlap of the pictures. That, that's a, a thing. But uh, the idea is to have no overlap. Now, look at these pictures. I'm going to look at these pictures and see what we have to work with. Um, each picture has a direction and it has elements how your eye kind of travels through the picture. This photo faces right. So does this pic this photo of the cross looking out over Barcelona faces left. These pictures face left. This guy is looking left. This picture, this photo sort of has an upward feeling. This photo sort of has a downward feeling. So the the idea though is as you place your pictures on the frame here the, and this is the the kind of like the main part of this assignment is how you place all your pictures on the frame so like if i want to place the picture i wouldn't place this place this photo on the edge like this because it's going to face out of the frame if your eye is traveling around this layout it might like go come down here and kind of like move around but then it comes here and it just the the line is out of the frame now this is like facing out of the frame. So this picture should not go, this photo should not go on the left side of the design. It should go on the right side of the design. And since these two photos are, are right photos, I could put them in here like this. This might work. Now, this photo has a sort of a, like th this person's head, there's like openness. You th there's a feeling of openness ab above this. This one, there's sort of a base to the photo on the bottom. So I think this photo kind of goes better on the bottom of the design than it does on the top of the design. So I'm going to put this photo sort of like down here and then I'll line this one up on top. Now, one of the issues with now there's a little bit of a, um, um, the grid is turned on and snapped grid so it won't move perfectly smoothly. It snaps to various like five and ten pixel uh, like a five pixel snap so as you can see it moves around it moves a little jerkily so it's because it's snapping into a spot it's not perfectly smooth when you move it around so in order to get these pictures to line up perfectly unlike now you could do the math and figure that out but that takes a little long so I'm gonna look at these two pictures I'm gonna just zoom in on this spot right now oh, and one of the same conventions for graphics programs is I'm zoomed in. If I hit the space bar, it turns my cursor into a hand, which means when I click and drag, it drags the whole background. When it's not the hand, it just moves the background. So I don't want that. Um, and I can also, right here, see how I move the background? I don't want to do that, so I'm going to lock the background in place. Oops, that's the view. Sorry, let's see. Lock is over here. Um, locked. So now my black background is locked and I can't drag it around. That's going to make it easier for designing. So now I can look at these two. It looks like I want to move this over just one more pixel. And now these are lined up perfectly because I kind of have to do it by eye in this case. I could go and use the math and do all that. But that, you know, to get it perfect, I would use the math. To get it working, I won't. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to control zero, go back out to the top. And here we have these two photos, these three photos left. And so I think maybe this photo should go on top and this photo below, right? Because this, this photo has kind of a line, a strong line on top. And this photo has a, a sort of like upward design. So you can, your eye would kind of travel around. So let's move this one over here and get that lined up and then move this one over and get this one lined up and try and line them up. 
So they're all, the sizes are all even. And it looks like they're pretty close. Uh, this one needs to move up. So now those are lined up. And then we have the last one of the Valencia Science Center. Let's just move that over here and go in. And there we go. So now I've got my pictures arranged. So you see you kind of have this strong line that comes down here, kind of slides around. Your eye has a kind of a direction. This, this strong line points up at this. These lines kind of like, and this whole design kind of points down this way. It sort of makes sense to have this design work this way. So now I've got my five photos. And unfortunately, there is no way, I think, to select all of these photos. I haven't figured it out yet. I just moved that one. Um, there's, uh, there should be a way to select, let's see, maybe it's this way. No. I cannot select all the layers at once. So there are some limitations to, to Pixlr. Um, there is probably a way to select all these so I can move them around all at once. This looks like it's a little too close. I'll just move it over. Now you can also nudge, let's say what I did, instead of using the mouse, I used the, the arrow keys to nudge that over a little bit. All right, so that looks a little better. All right, so now I've got my sort of like design set up here. I've got this going on. I'm going to add some text. So I'm going to click on the text tool. And um, actually, I'm going to add a text layer. So because so, if I click on this, it's just going to automatically add a text layer. It says, you want to add a new text layer? Add. Or you can just click on this and then choose text layer. And we're going to type in European Travels. Now, I want to move that around. So I'm going to click on the Select tool but and change the size of the box. So right now, the words inside the box are centered. And that's a thing. There's now a couple of things I want to do. I want to change the font, but notice up here, the tools are position tools and size tools rather than, um, rather than text tools. To get the text tools to turn back on, I click on the, the text, the, the type tool, the text tool, and now it's changed from from the position to all the font tools. So first off, I want to have this right aligned or right justified. So I click on the right align um, button. And so that's done. And then color, that's eh, OK. I'm going to click on a different font. And I want, so if you click on the um, first letter, of a um, a font, it will go to the, if you know, like I know I want this font, and I know the name of it, um, you can click on the name, otherwise you do have to scroll through quite a few fonts. They have a lot of fonts, which is really cool, but, um, ooh, not that. That. Okay, so there's my European travels, and this box will not show in the design, so um, I'm gonna move my font in and I want to line it up the, with the same spacing as the pictures. So hold on, let's go here. Um, and oh, I want this a little bigger, font 80. Let's see what 100 looks like. Oh, now I need to make this. Nah, I think 80 is better. We'll go back. All right. And for you video watchers, sorry for the beeps. That's people joining the class. And I have to keep an eye on that because it is the important thing. All right. So it looks pretty close. You can zoom in and see. Nah, that's pretty close. All right, so I've got my European travels. Now this particular, 
Now, when you put text on the screen, there are four, four, there are four characteristics of that text and any text you put on the screen. So this is going to be my title font. So my title font has one of the features is its font face. It's called mountain in this program. The other is its size. It's 80 pixels tall. The other is its color. It's white. And the last is its right justified. And if it was on the other side, I'd probably make it left justified, but it's right justified. So th those are the qualities of my title font. If I was to put another title somewhere, if I had another design or another page, I would keep that same font because then my the, then whoever looks at this will say, oh, that's a title. And if you have like 14 or 15 pages, that's a title. So um, hold on. This is our final? This is your final. This is all we have to do. How come we can't just do this on vector? Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you just really quick. Um, uh, hold on. And then, uh, hold on. There we go. Um, the, the reason is, uh, I was going to do this on vector, but when you're doing photos on vector, it does not, it, it is not a good program for doing photos. It, it, it makes the boxes weird. It basically, it makes a box around it, and the boxes, the pictures don't come in the right proportions. You can't resize the pictures easily. It's a nightmare. So I, I actually tried this in, in Vector. But the, the thing is, though, that a lot of the same things apply. Um, a lot of things th same things apply, like the size, the, all these features, the, the size and left and right position and, and so forth carry over so it's the same kind of program the one part that doesn't work as well is if you're making a um, uh, like a box or a triangle or something kind of graphic in the background it's not quite as good as vector but so the boxes have to be like actual pictures we take yes it, that's it, yeah you're gonna you these you're gonna put in pictures that you've taken all right well, so how, european how travel. We, like title it if the pictures we've taken are all like different um, uh, well, that's the that's your challenge is to find out a theme that will go with all the pictures. Like you mean, you could say um, photo one pictures, or um, figure out something, or or my best designs, or or something. You know, come up with some idea, or you could shoot new photos and and make them all of flowers or whatever. So, do they have to be in this shape? Uh, well, you I mean my, no, my design. So, so my design is based on the look of these photos. This photo has a left is looking left, so it should be on the right side of my design. If I add a different photo here, let's see, do I have a different photo? If I added a different photo here, I have these choices. Like here's a photo. Let's see if I add this photo to the design. This photo has is a centered photo. There's no left or right right yeah it doesn't have a direction so it could go it would probably go in the center of the layout of any okay. layout so if i make a layout this goes in the center because it doesn't have a left or a right if i um yeah. if i let's see if i'm going to add another i didn't plan on that many different um uh this one so here's another um from sevilla this church is in sevilla so here's a photo. This one has a lots of weight on the top. So this photo would probably be better in the upper right hand side of a design. So my layout, this one should be kind of in the upper right. It wouldn't oh, go in the upper, in the lower thinking. left because it's got a, a, a frame on this side, right? Yeah. So it should so go over here. So right. however, it depends on your photos. You're going to have to figure out with you know where to place your photos based on their look so in my design with the photos i've chosen here because this one sort of has a frame on the bottom and it's facing the, the cross kind of faces this way because it's on the right side of the picture so it's kind of facing left this picture works on the bottom better and it sort of supports this the 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 picture of the guy here these yeah. photos sort of like flow with each other and this one, the, the diagonal lines kind of match the diagonal lines of the whole design. So that's why they're in the position they're in. Your photos will have different arrangements 
So they'll be in a different position because you'll be saying, oh, well, this guy, your, your guy might now. You could. If this guy was over here, he'd be on this side. Right. Yeah. So it just depends on on your own photos, where they go in arrangement. And that's part of the assignment is figuring out when you put your photos on your layout, where you're going to put them. Okay. I All get right. you. All right. So now. Will you be able to do it now and turn it into you, or we have to wait? Oh, no. Well, uh, we're going to. Once I'm done with this, you're welcome to go start. And the plan is, you know, spend some class time today and Thursday, you know, setting this all up. And, um, and our final is, is today going three. So uh, Wednesday at nine o'clock is our final. You know, we can use final time or, you know, work on on um, uh, old assignments. Now, uh, there's, as a quick note, you can turn in old assignments. If you send me a note and say I was procrastinating or or, you know, I just didn't, didn't get to it or I was really busy with chemistry or whatever you were working on. Um, just send me a quick note and you are welcome to turn in old work. As long as you send me a Schoology note saying ah, I was just whatever the reason was, just a one sentence thing says I was doing something you can still turn in old work as I want you all to pass. All right, so I've got my European travels. I've got my, my layout here. Um, I wanna add some body text. Body text is the writing that is the description of whatever's going on. And it's gonna be a different, it's gonna have different features than my title font. So first I have to add a layer. So now I'm like, I'm gonna add my layer and I'm gonna write I want to first off, I want to make it much smaller. So let's make this like 30. And I'm going to use a different font, but I'm going to move it, move it around. So I, I move it around so I can see it while I type. I'll put it down here and I can double click on it and I go back into the editing and I say, um, uh, wow, I can't. Wow, I can't type. Okay, so now I've got something to say. I'm going to change back to my text tool because I want to change the font. I don't like that font. Let's go down to... Okay, print clearly. All right. And then let's change this so it's more than one line. Um, I mentioned that in this one. So now this, this text is centered, so I can't really put it... I could have put it like over here, but it doesn't really fit. I'm going to make this uh, go back to the text to the font. So there's sort of like a lot of clicking back and forth between select and font. I'm going to make this right justified as well, right aligned. And um, well, let's make it a different color. I can make this. So here's the color button. I click on this and there we go. And I've got my color picker. I can go over here and you notice when I mouse over the picture, I can get a color. So I could get a sort of a super light blue color from this picture here for my font. Or I could use this, let's see how this looks. That's too dark. So I can pick one of these colors from one of my pictures if I wanted to make a font. There we go. Or I could just make it yellow. So there's a bunch of different ways to make my yellow doesn't look good. Let's go back to the light, light blue. Or just white. All right. So 
I've changed the font face. The justification, the alignment is still the same. Uh, the font is smaller and and I'm going to make it. So here's a um, I'm going to put it over here and line it up. And so there's the bit of body text. Now, if I put body text, if I have another description, let's say I wanted to put um, descriptions, uh, space these out more, like move these pictures apart more and put a description under uh, like a something under each picture of what it is. I might um, I would use the same font face and alignment and color for all the body text for all if, if the text is going under the picture this this kind of text would all be the same if I made another if this was like two pages or I had two designs I would keep the same title font and face and alignment and size and the body font would be the same so that that way when somebody looks at this they'll be able to say oh that's a description font not a, a title font um, now when you are changing the size of the box and this is something that um, this is kind of crazy with this one like four words here and then all these words here. I'm going to I want to when I change the size of this, that might be OK. You're just going to check and see what looks best. That didn't look good. So how that was all arranged. Yeah, that didn't look good. So how the the font lines up. That might be the best one. So you're going to figure out this is part of the design, how the font um, lines up when you, because now this kind of line here kind of closes in. You could put another line of text down here. Um, so there is a basic. Now you might want to rearrange this. So there's quite a bit of negative space up here. And, you know, it does, you know, a little asymmetrical composition is OK, but I, you know, might want to move this up. That's where the the vector would be better. But because the vector does pictures so horribly, you know, you can move each one of these individually and kind of rearrange this. Um, I have yet to figure out if there's a way to do the arranging where you can select everything and just move it at once. Um, that doesn't appear to be a thing. So it might take some a little bit more work because I've already done this a couple of times. I know ex kind of where I'm putting the pictures because um, I figured it out ahead of time for the demonstration. But for your designs, um, it might take a little bit more moving around. Like this, this might be a little bit too close to the bottom over here. I might move this up a little bit. But to do that, I'm going to have to move up each now, actually, I could do it uh, this way. So top is 131. I could make this 100. So I could subtract um, 31 from each one. So 31 is 69. Whoops. So 31 would be... 32, 33, and just go through that that way. So then I can I know I'm I'm getting the exact number. Um, 22, 5. And then this one's going to be the same. And I could do this. Here's an interesting one. You know, so there's lots of different things you can try out with your design. So now I've moved it up a bit. Now, now the problem is if you liked it the way it was before, now you have to change it all back. But it is a way to move stuff around. So what I did was I just subtracted from the top, I subtracted 31, and now it's it's all spaced it out, spaced out according to um, that x y position, so top and width, or top and top and left. So this is left is 1450. I could check this. This should be 1450 as well. It is, and this one 1025, 1025. So we're looking at the position. So the 
top is from top to bottom. The left is from the left. So um, you can check your position and uh, arrange things that way. And that's where the, the orientation comes in. All right. So that needs to be moved over a little bit more. There we go. So there's my design. Uh, uh, one of the questions in the chat. and Oh, oh, let me finish up. I'll answer the question in the chat in a second. Let me finish up with saving this. So what you're going to turn in is both the Pixlr file and the, the JPEG of this. To get a JPEG, you're just going to go up to File. You're going to say Save. It's going to give you this. Mine's already type, titled Final Sample P3. JPEG, Hi. I'm going to move this over to 100% quality, so the, the highest quality possible, and click on Download. And, oh good, now my I'm recording the screen and the, this part shows up. And the last one I did, it didn't show up. So now I've got my... Um, work area I've got. I'm going to save my final sample P3 JPEG and save it. And so now I've saved that to my computer. Um, then you're going to upload it from there. Now to save the Photoshop like file. So a JPEG, once this turned into a picture, it's no longer things you can move around. It's no longer layers. It's just a JPEG. It just basically takes all this and makes it into one JPEG, the one photo. To make the, to save it now, this is saved in the um, Pixlr website. Um, you can also save the Pixlr version by the PXD file format. Is this format so that you that saves all the layers and all the pictures as separate things and saves the text as separate? And when I download that, it downloads. I've already saved one. It downloads as a dot pxd file and i have to now to edit that file i have to put it back into pixlr i have to put it back here to edit it again but i've saved it off the website uh, off the pixlr website now if i click on home i look here there's my design i click on home you can see that here's my latest design Here's the one I did earlier. Oh, and you can also add, I'll, I'll just add that bit in. So to sort of emphasize the layers, I'll one more little feature. I'm gonna add a rectangle, right? I wanna add a rectangle to this design and I think it's gonna do it in the back. Gonna draw it in layer one. Let's see. Yep, I want to undo that. I want to make I'm make a new layer. I'm going to make a new layer and draw my rectangle there and just leave it empty. And I'll draw my rectangle on my new layer. But as you can see, it's covering everything up. So that's I don't want that. So I'm going to go to my layer tool. Here's my selected layer. I'm going to move it down through the design. But I don't want to move it too far. Because it would move it underneath. Oh, my bottom layer is locked, so I can't. So I can't move it beyond that bottom layer. Because then it would disappear. All right, so there's, I've got, that's kind of interesting. I've got a little frame thing going on. Let's change it to, the, to this. And move it around a little bit. There, it's in the center of the page. I think that might look good. You can change the shape of this design I can you know I can um, go up here to file and click on oops edit and click on free transform free transform means that if I drag the corner it'll drag no matter where, where I dra it'll drag to you know change the pr proportion of it uh, maybe I want to put it maybe I want that to be the design um, I can also click on yes and I also click on free distort. And now I can move the corners around independently. All 
All right, so there's my sort of my final design. And I can save that. I'll save that version. That worked a little better than my last one. And this time I'm going to save it. I'm going to make sure it's highest quality. I'm going to save it over the top of the one I already did. And it's going to save. Do you want to? And I, yes. All right, so there is the, the basically the final. Um, yeah, I think that one turned out a little better than the last one. All right, so I'm going to uh, stop recording the screen.